Good morning, Big Springs Community Church family and to all those watching online from your homes. Today is Thursday, July 9th. Let us begin our morning prayer with these words from Psalm 32, verse 6. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us pray this prayer of confession. O Lord, we often have not rent our hearts with godly sorrow, nor thoroughly repented of our sins. We have not denied ungodliness and worldly lusts. Wash our hands in purity and cleanse our mouths by this confession of our sins. Give us grace to examine ourselves thoroughly and sincerely. Fit us with a wedding garment of knowledge, repentance, faith, and love, and show us how to change. Then may we joyfully and thankfully depart this day to our callings. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God declares us pardon of our sins from 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Today we will have a prayer of praise to God and a prayer for His people. Let us pray. O God, the God of all creation, you are beyond compare and stand in need of nothing. You have given the sun to rule over the day and the moon and the stars to rule over the night. Look down on us with gracious eyes and receive our morning thanksgivings and have mercy upon us. We have not spread out our hands to a strange God, for there is not among us any new God but you, the eternal God. You are without end. You have given us our being and well-being through Christ. O God, you are faithful and true. You have mercy on thousands of those who love you. You love the humble and protect the needy who lack all things, for all things are subject to you. Look down on this, your people, who bow their heads to you and bless them with spiritual blessing. Keep them as the apple of your eye. Preserve them in piety and righteousness, and give them eternal life in Christ Jesus, your beloved Son, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory, honor forever and ever. Amen. Today we continue with our meditations on Ecclesiastes chapter 12, but before that uh, I will read a passage from 2 Corinthians 5, verses 1 through 5. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made by hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is moral, a mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Then our main reading is from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 to 5. Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men are bent, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look through the windows are dimmed, and the doors on the street are shut, when the sound of the grinding is low, and one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high, and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire fails. Our meditation today is, Before the evil days come. 
Already in chapter 11, verse 8, the preacher warns of many days of darkness ahead for all of us. Then he begins chapter 12 with an exhortation to remember God before the evil days come, days of no pleasure to us. When we look at the whole passage of verses 1 through 7, we see that these evil days are days when people in their old age suffer afflictions. All of their capacities, physical, mental, and emotional, weaken and deteriorate. So in verses 2 through 7, the preacher writes a beautiful figurative description of the aging process. Although it's a somber poem, it makes us reflect on the inevitability of aging. In verse 2, the failure of the sun, moon, and stars to give light is a picture of the life of an old person getting dimmer and dimmer until the light is fully extinguished. Also, the afflictions of old age seem to have no end, like a storm with its rain and the clouds that keep coming back after each short lull. From verse 3, the keepers of the house that tremble refer to hands that tremble, much like those who have Parkinson's disease. The strong men are bent, points to the bones of the body that are weakened and bent with age, especially the legs and the back. The grinders that seize are teeth that decay. Those who look through the windows are dimmed, refer to failing eyesight with its floaters, cataract, and glaucoma. In verse 4, the preacher sees the doors on the street that are shut as ears that are hard of hearing so that the sound of the grinding is low. The ears are close to the hustle and bustle outside the house. Conversely, the aged person rises up at the sound of a bird because he doesn't sleep soundly anymore. The daughters of song are brought low, symbolize vocal cords that are also failing. In verse 5, the preacher illustrates physical changes among the aged. One is the almond tree that blossoms. In the springtime, almond trees are pale, so this could be the graying of old folks. Another is the twilight of physical strength, like the grasshopper that drags itself along, not able to jump from place to place as it used to. Then there is the waning of youthful passions. Desire fails, which may include the loss of appetite for both intimate physical activities and good food. Finally, the preacher describes some of the emotions of old people. Elderly people have many fears. They are afraid of what is high. No more bungee jumping or skydiving. No more pleasures in the wild rides of amusement parks. Terrors are in the way is a way of saying that they are also afraid of going outside the house because of evildoers. They are easy prey to pickpockets, swindlers, and robbers. Feelings of insecurity are very common. They fear of being a bother, of having, having nothing to offer to others. They fear that they don't have enough retirement money, that they would live in poverty. Their siblings are mostly gone, their own children have their own families, and they're alone. They fear the onset of Alzheimer's disease, that they would lose their memory. Faithful believers are afraid that they would lose their faith and doctrine in their old age if they lose their mind. Often they also harbor feelings of guilt and regret. David prays in his later years, Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, Psalm 25, 7. They often lament their past sins against their own family and friends. Sometimes they also have bitterness toward others and the way things have turned out for them, dwelling on thoughts, if only I had done this or that. The picture of old age is bleak. Is life worth living after 80, 70, or even 60 with all its pains and afflictions? We have hope only if we have something to look forward to beyond 
our afflictions in this life and beyond death itself. This hope is that when this body, this tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, God will give us a new building, not a new tent, but a house not made with God, <coughs> a house not made with God eternal in the heavens. This building, our eternal body and soul, will never be destroyed and will never shed tears of mourning or suffer pain again. For in Christ, we have eternal life. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, you are as rich in pity as you are in power, merciful and mighty. See your whole creation as it has been groaning in the pains of childbirth until now. As you have broken the power of evil by the cross of Christ and by his endless sacrifice, you take away the sin of the world, hasten the time when the last enemy of humanity shall be completely defeated and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain any more, and you will wipe away every tear from our eyes through your redeeming love in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. Receive now God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen.